Other than that, just occasionally we get to see a Chinese national team player. Playing with the left hand and a quick start, a long risky serve. Saki Shibata at the back of the tables, fired up and fast. Excellent spin. Talked about the fire, talked about her power, but you can see that she's very driven to play, that she's quite hot. We see this from many of the young Japanese players from Harimoto to Sakura Mori, Miyu Maeda, even Maki Shiomi. Quite vocal on the court. Look how heavy that push is. A lot of the time, if you're trying to keep the ball short on the table, you'll come in with a very loose grip to leave the ball right near the net. But Saki Shibata tries something else, much like Michael Mays, digs into the ball right, on, right off of the bounce on the receive. And this time, it's a little bit deeper into the backhand. Satisfied Chun Bean in the corner as Gu Yuting rips it cross court. This time she quickly adjusts to the heavy backspin on the ball on that push. Missed contact on the third forehand loop. Saki Shibata gets low and really gets leaned back to spin this first ball. Watch her trajectory here. And see the footwork. But as the ball comes up a little bit higher, gets more of a full arm stroke to try and drive it. This is more typical of the Chinese national team players, Gu Yuting. Beautiful right down the line shot to redirect after the cross court opening. The precision of placement is going to be so important for Saki Shibata. It seemed like the perfect shot right on the crossover point, but Gu Yuting is quick to turn and get a short stroke forehand in. In that replay, it was exactly where you'd imagine Saki Shibata has to hit the ball to really cause an opening. So that's three in a row for Gu Yuting. And this is surprising. From that camera angle, it looked like a clear winner. Even Gu Yuting's body language says, even a flat hit to kill this ball. Watch one more time. Light topspin, popped up a little bit, goes for a softer, spinnier shot and misses the contact. Again, it's in near the net. Clever idea, we see this a lot from Kenta Matsudaira, that inside out forehand bending away. And against a left-handed player, that can be a valuable shot, but it's always gonna be a high risk shot. Especially with the wide wingspan of Gu Yuting. Pros and cons to being tall in table tennis. Covering the wide shots is definitely one of the advantages. Covering ground off the table if you find yourself behind. Whoa, getting a knee to the ground. Gu Yu Ting with a stylish shot there to take the point. Not too often we see this. Serve comes long. It almost looked like both knees got near the ground for a second. The right knee and then the left one still swinging around to get the power. Little break off the top of the net, but an impressive shot nonetheless. Saki Shibata with two shots in this rally. It come back. There's one, the fanning backhand with some side spin on it, and even on the move away from the table, manages to keep some pace on with the punching backhand. And the sponge makes it look like Chinese rubber. We have to assume it's Chinese rubber on the forehand for Saki Shibata. We see this with a lot more of the young Japanese women players. From Hina Hayata to a few others, the Chinese rubber on the forehand side. A little bit tackier. Again, if you see someone doing something that's working well, it doesn't hurt to give it a try. It's why watching these professional matches is so good for players around the world. Even the practice partners of many of the young Japanese women, a lot of them speak some Chinese because they do have practice partners from China, maybe a provincial player who didn't have a career in table tennis but still reached quite a strong level. Kasumi Ishikawa, Aifukuhara, Miyu Hirano, all the way down the list, most of the Japanese women have Chinese practice partners. So Gu Yu Ting was down 0-3 at the start of this game. It's been back and forth a bit. Murata's on there in the corner, trying to empower and pump up Saki Shibata, give her some 
wise words to find holes in the opponent's game here. That's one way. Top of the net, little break. Of course, you can't depend on this. A little bit of fortune here. And that ball stayed so short to the net. Even with the wingspan of Gu Yuting, not even a chance to reach that one. And while that heavy push started off effective, again, it's that variation and adapting in the game. Sometimes a long floating push is going to be a little bit more effective, but mixing it up so that Gu Yuting cannot get too into a rhythm here, too comfortable with her opening loops. This was a much nicer change from Saki Shibata. Soft shot. Playing it short, and then a little bit of side spin on this forehand push. But again, the hesitation at the back of the table. It didn't look like she wanted to go long. It was Gu Yuting's placement that forced her into a defensive shot. And now it's four game points for Gu Yuting on the receive. Heavy push works this time. Again, into the crossover point, getting Gu Yuting to turn for the forehand. One game point saved. Excellent counter, Gu Yuting with a big shot, takes game one, 11 points to seven over Saki Shibata. Game two coming up in just a little bit. We've got coaches in the corners, so they'll have a chance to come back with their game strategy, and we'll see how 19-year-old Saki from the Chiquita, the banana flip over the table, to taking the follow-up topspin attack, and either punching through but keeping some topspin on it, but staying on top of the bounce, trying to create some wide angles, but again, in near the table is going to be the most important thing for Saki Shibata as soon as the counters start coming in. Covering the middle well, it'll break off the top of the net. You can see how threatening the placement is of Gu Yuting shots right into that crossover point. And they're deep on the table and low. It makes it very difficult for Saki Shibata to stay in at the table. Excellent placement on the fast, deep push to the backhand. Shibata quick to get in. At the start of game one, she was the more fired up player, but the adjustments were made by Gu Yuting. Now with such a solid third ball, Saki Shibata had a lot of recovery to do after putting so much power. Watch one more time here. Really goes for it. And gets the racket head back up to the middle, but Gu Yuting plays it to the backhand side of the body. Nice change of placement. Little inside out, out to the forehand side. So the start of the game is where Saki Shibata really shined in game one. But it's who crosses the finish line who gets the game. So Gu Yuting leading, and Saki Shibata has her work cut out for her. What are you going to do? Such a strong opening shot. Wide out to the forehand. Saki Shibata's really going to have to stay on top. As she backs up to try and turn around and take the forehand shot, the pace that Gu Yuting brings back is still just too much to handle. So Gu Yuting ties it back up. Now we've seen different players successful from time to time from Japan against some of the top Chinese players. Gu Yuting again second string from the Chinese national team. Change of pace is often effective against some of the top Chinese players. Anyone who's playing on the world tour. One way to break the rhythm. It's been a difficult task. Gu Yuting has not shown too many weaknesses. Good over the table in the short game. Comfortable in the long serves. But a long serve out to the forehand, unless it's out of reach, is rarely going to be so threatening. Not at this level. Better attempt, but again, coming back. Tough to keep the body weight forward. 
Now, in the few advantages that Saki Shibata has, the low center of gravity, the shorter stroke, you know, Deng Yaping was the best player, the most dominant player women's table tennis has seen, and she was four foot 11. And with a service error here, again, it just shows the pressure for how precise a serve has to be low to the net. Most of the serves you see are coming just across the net, a few centimeters above at most usually. Second bounce on the back of the table, soft hands, and Shibata takes it early off the bounce to get right back in. Wow, that ball really just bit the table. Heavy backspin. Now again, with new balls and new tables, the ball tends to be gripping the table a little bit more, so that heavy backspin can really dig in and keep the ball shorter. Once again, a heavy push. Three in a row for Shibata. It's been back and forth. A lot of different personalities from the Japanese women. Saki Shibata's focus, very impressive. Outstanding recovery. Again, the big shot comes back, and it seemed to be a surprise. Shibata gets the racket head back up. I thought the point was over for sure right after this. Placed right in near the body, but still quick and powerful to turn. She has a very fearless game. This will be the second time I reference Kenta Matsudaira, but they both really can go for broke, it seems, off the table. Fans getting their signs ready for their national team players. Shovel serve with deceptive spin. Shibata misreads, dumps it into the net. Again, that heavy push really digging deep. And it's wrist strength here a lot too. Timing, wrist strength. Gu Yuting has shown us in game one that she's able to lift and loop on that opening shot. But if, if Saki Shibata shortens it up a little bit, it's a little bit more difficult for Gu Yuting to lift. And again, any variation in placement to keep Gu Yuting slightly off balance. Service warning here. Hey. Trying to see was the assistant umpire, the more clear view with the service warning. He's trying to see what it was. And it seemed the same for Saki Shibata, wants to make sure she understands what the warning is. Ha! Very important, of course, to make sure you're not repeating the offense and getting faulted, losing points. Shovel serve. And the push comes up a little bit high. Gu Yuting with a strong opening attack on the step around. Ooh, chop block receive. Rare we see this. Side spin and under spin out to the forehand. So we've got the pendulum serve, and the angle of the racket comes in at a 45 degree as Shibata chops down. Really loading it with spin once again for a one point lead at the business end of game two. Well played right on the crossover point. Big point for Gu Yu Ting at the third towel break. It's dead even at nine points apiece. You can hear the crowd, Gu Yu Ting, Jio. Go for it, Gu Ting. And a timeout on the side of Saki Shibata. We do see more and more in table tennis timeouts being called early on in the match, earlier while the players still have time 
to have it have a drastic effect on the outcome as opposed to sort of a life raft at the very end, but something that can be planted and used throughout. Not to mention, being up 2-0 is a large, I'd say a very sizable advantage for Gu Yu Ting. But if Saki Shibata can make her opponent nervous, get in with one more, I'd say, get a game early on, it's definitely going to put more pressure on Gu Yu Ting. Now, from a pressure standpoint, the pressure for the Chinese national team has always been unparalleled because there are such great expectations. When you're on top of the world, you're expected not to lose, especially not to lose to a foreigner. That is the greatest misstep you can have when you're playing for the Chinese national team. Losing to a Korean player, Jun Mizutani. Losing to somebody else very strong, Melissa Tapper. If I remember correctly, drew one of the younger Chinese players early on in the tournament. Again, a few unranked players here, much like Gu Yu Ting, having to play their way through the qualification rounds. Surprise, surprise, deep into the backhand. Smart play from Gu Yu Ting right out of the timeout. Get the shovel serve here. Sits up just a little bit. It looks too comfortable for Gu Yu Ting. And now game point for Gu Yu Ting. Shibata going back to the corner. Taking a long time here trying to figure out what to serve. Outstanding rally and Gu Yu Ting with the big fight finally finds the edge of the racket for her opponent. What you know, both of these players have their share of experience on the world tour. Saki Shibata slightly more than Gu Yu Ting despite their difference in age. Again, the Japanese National Association with the most impressive participation on the world tour for the last few years. Ooh, quick recovery. And I like the spring in the step of Saki Shibata. Not for a moment has she turned it off, even after losing two points in the last game straight out of the timeout, with her serve as well. She has a very positive energy out here. Real sense of fight. Oh, back edge of the table for Gu Yu Ting. Changes the trajectory, makes it very difficult in such a fast game to return this ball. And not only do these players move so fast, they anticipate so well. And they read from the smallest signs where the ball's likely to go. They start making their move and at the point of contact, immediately get the racket out. Gotta love the fight. Shibata has a rock star style about her chose. We hear a lot of different pitches from the vocalization of players. Maki Shiomi, one of the highest pitches sounds. It's a her and Hina Hayata, way up there. Saki Shibata rock and roll out here, leading two points to one in the third game. The start of the game has always been hers. Long push in the opening forehand drifts wide. So again for Shibata, she's been trying to break it up, trying to change the rhythm and the placement on the table. Gu Yu Ting has not had too many problems adjusting. This one goes straight down under the table. Sometimes you think the ball's wet if it slides that much. That long stroke, you can see how low the racket gets behind the back from Gu Yu Ting, down by the left calf. Nice placement pinned on the backhand. Now when Gu Yu Ting gets the opening backhand off a push, she tends to be quite comfortable loading it with spin and even playing power cross court. But in some of the faster rallies, where she's looking for the forehand, and that's a key element here, is the element of surprise. Saki Shibata has to read her opponent's body language, see the patterns that have been set before, and break them.
Ooh, look at this. Shovel serve again. It's not the first time we've seen Saki Shibata dump it into the net. It's fast. It's well placed. Low to the net. Guyu Ting two points in a row to tie it up. This is the one that's been a bit simple for Gu Yu Ting. Shovel serve half long to the backhand side. She's very comfortable with the wrist at the back of the table to generate a lot of spin on that opening. Not two, top of the net and in the first, but the second one goes out. And with the Chiquita receive, the third ball anyway, there's that side spin and top spin from Shibata. Fast footwork to get in, but Gu Yuting quite fast as well. Now from a strength and speed standpoint, Gu Yuting and I had a chance to chat a little bit before this match today from the hotel. She's got a very thin frame, but you can see strong muscles in the quads. And again, she's quite tall. Nice turn from the middle. Again, deep to the backhand. Gu Yu Ting changing it up around the table. One thing we haven't seen a lot of, considering she's a left-handed player, is inside out forehands, where she plays it out wide to the forehand side, catching the inside of the ball. But so far, no changes need to be made. She's led every game, or at least she's won every game so far, and is leading here by three. Clever idea, just missing the short side of the table. It's interesting we see so many shovel serves. I think for the first time for me seeing this was from the Chinese national team. But again, many of these habits have become part of the young Japanese women's team as well typically following the habits of world champions and the world leaders. Not a bad idea. Heavy push comes back and it's a three point lead once again. Shibata's serve is broken. So we've seen some changes in the depth on the table and where she's serving from, but it's been mostly shovel serves coming around the outside for Shibata. Now it was the last match of the day, or the last match, the match before this even, where we saw a server take some spin off the ball. But you could see the jump in the kick there. It's just coming a little bit too long off the table. Occasional dead serves from Shibata could be useful. But now 10 to five Gu Yuting with five game points to take a three to zero lead. Saki Shibata, 5'11", has her work cut out for her as Gu Yuting takes the third game and is up 3-0. We'll have one minute. She's on the receive to start. And in that counter-looping game, it's going to be a challenge. Once Gu Yuting steps off the table, gets that full stroke in, Saki Shibata is really going to have to play some high-risk off-the-bounce counters. If they're the same distance from the table, Gu Yuting is going to be a bit faster. She's going to have a bit more power, and she's going to be a little more consistent. There it is, the inside-out forehand playing the parallel shot, a riskier shot. It seems that Saki Shibata and I are on the same page about tactics right now. Shortens up the serve this time. Little break off the top of the net. Tries to change it up. A heavy spin shot, a little more shallow on the table, but well read as Gu Yuting counter loops for the winner. Watch the bounce of this third ball. 
way in on the table. And this really tests the balance of the opponent. Gu Yuting is able to stay planted, lean in. And another service error, quick to turn her back to the table. Can understand the frustration when you take a risk and it doesn't pay off. In the long run, though, I think it will. Playing bold, taking that risk will be a learning experience for Gu Yuting. It'll make her want to practice it harder instead of playing safe. Generally, there's less to learn if you're playing safe, except for sometimes that you should probably take more risks out here. Pinned in the middle once again. Now the shorter players should be able to take more forehands from the middle. Lower center of gravity again, less body to move to turn on it. But it does leave open that wide forehand, which will be dangerous if Gu Yuting gets the opening. Look at this shot. There's that wide forehand angle. She takes it with the backhand. As soon as Shibata steps around, stays pinned in the corner. Interestingly enough, it's not the first shot after. It's after Shibata plays the backhand. Gu Yuting breaking the pattern. Shibata knows as soon as she steps around for the forehand, she has to cover the wide forehand or be prepared to. Very impressive persistence and counters. Gu Yuting making several shots, but Saki Shibata stays pinned on top. Look how far in front the racket is for these shots. And finally, that last backhand from way out in front still manages to tuck back the racket to add some spin to the ball. Little bit of eye contact there. Shibata looking her opponent right in the eyes. Gu Yuting. Maybe it's not contact if they don't actually meet. But she's about to looking at her opponent after this rally, trying to lay down some law here. The Cho. It's interesting to see how far in front in some of these backhand rallies, Saki Shibata gets the racket out. Anything that dangles long, Saki Shibata has paid for dearly as Gu Yuting has eaten it for lunch. Right off the table and just a ripping forehand kills the ball. Now if you're really confident in your blocking game, if you're Ma Long occasionally, you'll see him bring it back into play and counter for a winner, just change up the placement. Saki Shibata can't have too much practice against players at Gu Yuting's level. Second towel of the break or second towel break of the game, rather, and it looks like Saki Shibata was saying, yeah, side of the table. Ball goes down, no problem. Now we're never for Saki Shibata. Has no more games left to give. There we go, the chop block comes back. We saw it before on a service receive. Here it's mid-rally. Soft touch there. Interestingly enough, she does it off of a push. More typically, I guess, I don't know if it's quite a chop block unless it's a loop shot, but either way, seeing some side spin on it coming in with the angle for that push has been effective for Shibata. Tries to redirect, just missing long and deep to the corner. It's sort of like a time bomb. Once you make one of those blocks, you're really looking for the opportunity to get in and counter aggressively if you're Saki Shibata. Playing passively can only work for a very short time out here. Beautiful start to the point, but Gu Yuting not phased. Saki Shibata spinning up from right at the back of the table. Watch this third ball. A very careful spin shot. 
trying to keep it deep on the table to keep Gu Yu Ting out of such dominance in the attack. But Gu Yu Ting leads by one. Right idea goes for the power deep to the corner. Gu Yu Ting again takes the point. Very interesting to me that we haven't seen many variations in delivery of serve, that almost everything has been a shovel serve from Saki Shibata. Not a pendulum, not a backhand serve. Too rarely has she had the advantage on the serve. But this time, a bit of top spin on it, deep on the table, keeps the pace on, and it jumps up into the edge of the racket. Deep push. You gotta love that jump forward. Saki Shibata gets on the ball. Still a one point lead for Gu Yu Ting with her second serve here. Oh, and a break off the top of the net. The forehand flip, going for a little bit of risk. She was late to get in here and realizes that she's gonna be out of position if she plays a push. Very fortunate escape for Saki Shibata, the third towel break of the game. Let's see this point again here. Just hoping for that ball to come long, backed just behind the table. Again, it's very difficult to keep, well, to surprise anyone when you're coming in late, but to keep the ball short, especially if you get to the ball late. Oh, a good set up the short side of the table, and Gu Yuting's right there to deflect the ball and bring it back cross court. Beautiful recovery. Watch this one more time. Gu Yuting, the push pops it up just a little bit. And those feet are so wide apart from Gu Yuting. Excellent coverage. And now, match point for the Chinese player in red, Gu Yuting, on the receive. And she does it, what a performance. Gu Yu Ting in four straight games takes out the player who beat Feng Tianwei in the opening round and could not be stopped before this match. So a solid tournament for Saki Shibata, but a more impressive one from Gu Yu Ting as she continues on to the women's singles semifinals. You'll have a chance to see her later on today. Stick around, we've got two quarterfinals coming up between the men.